Hey guys, I'm Tom Tech Chap, and I want to answer one simple question. Can this top spec Mac Studio with an M1 Ultra and 128 gigs of unified memory really beat my desktop PC with a Ryzen 9 5950X and an RTX 3090? I must admit, I do think we have a bit of a David and Goliath situation going on here. I mean, in terms of size and portability, well, I think we know which one wins. And maybe that's a deciding factor for you, or maybe it doesn't really matter, but actually it does highlight that however the Mac Studio ends up performing compared to the PC, it is tiny. And realistically, this should go up against the Mac Pro, Apple's desktop, which we're expecting a refresh for after WWDC in June. So really that's the two that will go head to head. But for now, because we've got the new M1 Ultra, Ultra. While this is arguably a bit academic, it's also a bit of fun. So let's see which is faster. Although first, let's talk about price because this Mac Studio on my desk right here is the best part of £7,000. It's 6800 Although that is because it has four terabytes of storage. If you stick to the standard one terabyte with the M1 Ultra, it's £5,800. However, bear in mind that you cannot ever upgrade this and you can't really even open it to clean the fans or anything. But let's go with that £5,800 price tag for the time being. And compared to my desktop PC, which I did actually build myself, I have just now spec'd a pretty much identical system with a popular UK retailer, and it comes out at about four grand. Now it is a bit tricky at the moment building your own PC because of component shortages, particularly GPUs, and getting a RRP graphics card is just not really realistic right now. But still, even a custom pre-build seems to be significantly cheaper than a Mac Studio. And of course, with the PC you have infinite upgradability. You can add more RAM, storage, switch out the CPUs and GPUs. You can upgrade it bit by bit over time, which is a lot more affordable. Now, to be fair, I do only have 64 gigs of admittedly quite fast 3600 megahertz RAM in the PC. You could go crazy and add 128 gigs of DDR5, which would make a small difference, but it's still not really comparable with the unified memory we get in the Mac Studio or on any M1 powered Mac. But anyway, overall, in terms of cost and flexibility, really, I think that should be two points for team desktop PC. I say desktop PC. I do appreciate this is also sitting on my desktop and a Mac is a personal computer, but well, you know. In terms of power usage though, it is a big win for the Mac because this is rated at 370 watts all in. And that's actually the same for both the M1 Max and the M1 Ultra versions. Whereas I actually have a thousand watt PSU in my PC. Mainly because it is good practice to have a PSU with a higher wattage than you need, especially as we don't have the benefit of the super efficient, non-fragmented Apple system which we have in the studio here. In the PC, different components from different brands and offering different speeds all impact how much power it draws. But to give you an idea, the 3090 Founds Edition, which I have in this PC, is rated at 350 watts, which is almost the same as the entire Mac Studio, and that's before the 105 watt PSU and then the RAM, the SSD, and all the extra stuff. Altogether, we're looking at roughly two to two and a half times the power draw on the PC versus the Mac. That's crazy, and while I would say the advantage there is that it will save on your electricity bills, which it will a little bit, chances are if you're paying between, you know, four and six grand for a machine, then that's not really your top priority. Okay, let's get to the good bit. Which one is faster? Well, let's start with a couple of benchmarks. And in Cinebench R23, amazingly, they're neck and neck. The Mac Studio is just one and a half percent faster in multi-core, which is kind of incredible considering how vastly different the architectures are. And also the fact the M1 Ultra has 20 CPU cores to the 16 on the Ryzen. Okay, next up, Geekbench. And I know no one really likes this benchmark, so I'll keep it brief. We are seeing a 48% higher multi-core score on the Mac, which is pretty huge. But then in the Geekbench compute test, the RTX 3090 is 150% faster. Okay, let's move on to some proper tests. And firing up a bit of Blender, I've got this quite demanding Ripple demo project here, and I wanted to see how long it would take for each of them to render 1000 frames. And it turns out it's a pretty big win for the PC. It takes around half the time of the studio. This is definitely where the RTX GPU is having a big impact because in this BMW CPU only test, the PC is just 5% quicker. But then in the GPU version of the test, the PC is around three times faster. So a pretty big win for team PC when it comes to Blender. But what about video editing? 
Well, I think it's fair to say if you shoot in ProRes and edit in Final Cut, then you are going to get a better, much more optimized experience with the Mac. But for my workflow, I shoot with a Sony a7S III, recording 10-bit 4K 60 video, and then I edit in Premiere Pro, and I'm also using the latest beta version. So a basic question for me is always, which one will export my project faster? Well, exporting in 4K H.264 with the max render and max depth settings checked, it's a big win for the Mac. 7 minutes 50 versus 10 minutes 30. Now, same thing, but this time exporting in 8K, and we're looking at 12 minutes 40 versus 18 minutes 15. Now, a good all-round 4K and 8K use case test in Premiere Pro is running the Puget Extended Benchmark, and once again, it's a pretty decisive win for the Mac. Only the GPU scores slightly higher on the PC. Wow, okay, so if you're editing in, well, Final Cut, of course, or Premiere Pro, a cross-platform, industry-standard video editing app, then the Mac's your best bet. But what about Adobe Lightroom? Well, I loaded up 500 of my finest raw photos and then exported them to JPEG, where the Mac Studio took one minute and four seconds to the PC's one minute 48, so another win for the Mac. Now, I do have a bit of a suspicion that the PC will be winning the next test, gaming. Not only because of the obvious difference in the sheer volume of games available on PC versus Mac, but the RTX cards have a ton of gaming-focused features, including extras like ray tracing and DLSS support. Plus, we also have extremely good drivers. So firing up a bit of Shadow of the Tomb Raider, at highest settings of course and at 1080p, we're getting almost double the frame rate on the PC, although that is still a decent showing from the Mac. But it's in a totally different league in Metro Exodus. The PC is around three times faster, and that's without DLSS. Of course you can cloud stream games on both Mac and PC, which realistically I think is the best way of gaming on a Mac, even with the performance of the M1 Ultra, simply because the games, the drivers, and the optimizations just aren't there. So obviously I could test a million apps and programs and it might all be a bit different. Your workflow, how you use your computer may be different, but from my tests and my experience so far, is the Mac Studio actually faster than my desktop PC? Well, specifically, is the M1 Ultra graphics faster than the RTX 3090 graphics? Well, no, it's not. However, as a whole, is the Mac faster than the PC? Well, yeah, it can be, notably in my Adobe tests. Now, to be fair, we are expecting to see a RTX 3090 Ti released very soon, although the report suggests that it may have up to a 450 watt TDP or something like that. And of course, also uh, maybe the 4000 series cards coming later in the year, so there could be some big gains there. But also, after WWDC in the summer, we should see a refreshed Mac Pro desktop, which, as I say at the beginning of the video, is really what you would be comparing to this desktop Windows PC. So it will be worth revisiting this video then. But right now, I do have to give Apple credit for designing something this small that uses roughly half the power of this and is also basically silent the entire time. And in some cases, it can still significantly outperform the PC. So where does that leave us? Well, I think you're gonna be buying a system based on the software, whether you want Mac OS or Windows, rather than these sort of form factors and whether you want an RTX 3090 or a Mac Studio with an M1 Ultra, but it is very impressive, the efficiencies, the performance that we're seeing with this, and I cannot wait to see what Apple can do with a Mac Pro. So there isn't really a clear winner, obviously in terms of gaming and most graphically demanding tasks, you will want a PC with a high-end GPU, but for my workflow, it turns out the Mac Studio is significantly faster, and so I can tell you over the last couple of weeks since I've had this, the PC has been on the floor. I've only brought it back up to make this video and maybe play some games. But what do you think? If you could take one of these home with you right now, which would you go for? Let me know in the comments below. If you do fancy watching more of my videos, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button below, and I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.